I woke up one day and decided to challenge myself as a Pokemon Nuzlocker. I settled on the infamous Emerald Kaizo and made it my mission to play the best that I possibly could. No battle items, no EVs, and the AI was always on high. This is how it went. Training on Route 110, I encountered issues with this Delcaddy infatuating me while I was trying to get my team into better shape for Watson. I had a lot of bad luck though, specifically with this Curlia. I decided to get a little damage in before swapping out Ivysaur, surprised at the Thunder Wave. I go into God Chimeco, hoping to resist Psybeam, and actually got confused on switching despite taking the attack. Then this happened. Four whole turns of not being able to attack through Parafusion. Insanity. And it didn't stop there because although I learned Chimeco was really good at taking hits, the paralysis was kicking his ass. Thankfully, I had Mawile to lend a hand, but grinding was rough, to say the very least. I braced myself for what many trainers call a Nuzlocke killer of a rival battle, Route 110 May. I don't remember having too much difficulty in this fight, but this is a Kaizo game, so surely this will scar me for life. I get a good beginning matchup with Marshtomp versus Minon, but I get infatuated for the second time in this route. Thankfully, Signal Beam doesn't confuse, but Minon lives on one, and then I proceed to miss my 95 accurate tackle, but I attack a third time in a row because we don't love these hoes. In comes the times for a Giga Threat, so predicting a grass move, I swapped to Nidorina since Ivy can't do too much damage back, but it still did a lot of damage. Pursuit doesn't do enough though, and I obliterated the anemic lizard. Next we have what would be an epic catfight if I didn't have a floating thick side-beaming demigod to pimp slap Mei back to the streets where she belongs. Not knowing if I would need to swap, I thunder wave to set up for future turns of the battle. I then parafuse the salmonella out of Pidgeotto and devour it for Thanksgiving. The hacks god blesses me against this croc with a face only a mother could love, giving me the space to recover just enough to win the fight with the green health bar. Chimeco was popping off, so I let him stay in, slowing down the Charmeleon enough to get another recover off. Unfortunately, between the critical hit and Charmeleon's amazing moves, I just wasn't making any leeway. The moment it was paralyzed though, I got in a little damage, and thank god I didn't have burn to deal with too. Luck was blowing me under the table as I walked away unscathed, but even Lady Luck couldn't save me from these terrible encounter rates in the cities. After I gave myself and everyone watching at home extreme vitiligo, I fulfilled the conditions of summoning forth the rare and exquisite Porygon, who was not only a great attacker with only one week and it just fucking teleported. Route 117's encounter rates were abysmal, but after running a 26 mile marathon, my efforts were rewarded with a level 20 Volbeat. At first I was disappointed, but then not only did it have Moonlight, but I realized it was devouring these attacks from Nidorina, who I considered one of my best Pokemon in terms of raw power. Offensive abilities it could provide me, I had no idea. But since Chimeco is weak to two of the Elite Four, and Volbeat is super effective against one of them, I knew this would have lots of potential. I got a status condition on it, and I caught it first try. Now it was time to test the waters at Mavile Gym. Level wise I was doing a lot better than I had anticipated, and even got the first turn poison. The normal type surprised and confused me, but one flinch turned the tides of the entire battle against me. I realized that this gym wasn't just about electric types, but Pokemon who could learn electric moves, meaning that I had no idea what to expect for Watson now. Mawile did good work against this team, but it didn't have enough HP for a Pikachu. I swapped out into the Marsh Stomp thinking I would be just fine with the Mud Shot. But I didn't expect the Surf or the Seismic Toss, but I buried the rat alive. Mawile wanted to learn Knock Off, but it had the old base attack with 5 PP, and Super Fang was dark, so I decided against it. I did lots of damage to Shup it, but after the Citrus, I didn't know it Torrent would kill from that range, so I decided to give Nosepass a chance to shine. And sure enough, she did not disappoint. I just barely escaped Flaffy in time and swallowed the critical T Bolt, but I was shook at our difference in power. I had a lot of training left to do. The other battles went about exactly the same, with me ready to nurse Joy every fight. I managed to finally get through the very tricky new puzzle to the second to last trainer, but I didn't expect the double battle. 
I go for EQ since Chimeco floats, but I didn't expect them to both live, let alone the mining that I decided to gang up on. Then the AI swapped to save mining for later, and left Chimeco nearly dead in the dirt with a single thunderbolt. Nosepass got one kill off in the meanwhile. Volbeat fired off a signal beam, aiming for super effective damage, but I managed to switch to Nidorina just in time, however it still did tremendous damage. But, Nosepass comes through to claim another confirmed kill while still above 50% and flinch the Dunsparce. To top it all off, it survived the Giga Drain and rained down on the duo before she too got swapped out. Nidorina powered through flinch fusion to eliminate Illumis, leaving not much work left to be done. And once again, Fate saved me from death by Thunderbolt before I removed the Minun from the field once and for all. Dunspar subtly did a number on my team as well with all the paralysis. This win certainly didn't feel like one. It was time to start grinding away. I trained for hours before returning to face the Behemoth. His Jolteon devastated my defenses, but I wreaked havoc as well. Believing in my Pokemon, I toughed it out for win number one. The Manectra came in much earlier than I thought, and after mulling it over, I decided to go into Swampert praying it would last. Crunch did nothing like I thought it would, and Manectric was out of the game. I debated but stayed in to Munchot the Ampharos, who not only ate it, but had HP grass. By the skin in my teeth, I bodied it. Venusaur comes in to take the water attacks and resist electric moves. Expecting that somebody was gonna get paralyzed, I gave out as many cherry berries as I could, clutching this fight. I tried to hit the upcoming Electabuzz heavy with a Sludge Bomb, but it hit back even harder with the surprise Psychic Attack. My speedy frog plant dino thing earned yet another victory. Nosepass got paralyzed turn 1 by Body Slam, wasting its Cherry Berry very early. I had a feeling though it would be the best Pokemon to take whatever Raichu had in store for us. It took the Surf and fired back with an EQ. I thought I was screwed, but Nidorina took Thunderbolt so much better than I anticipated, finishing off Watson. This was the hardest gym battle I had ever fought, and I did it. But this was only the beginning. Turn your pants to a disappearance. I fuck with nothing but gangsters, nothing but hustler niggas. Sound off, sound off.